hello. My name is Michael, Michal Novotný, and I would like uh, to talk to you about RPKG, which should be the next generation packaging utility, basically a tool that should serve its purpose for packagers, but also maybe for upstream developers and university students and so on, if they want to do any kind of RPM packaging or generally creating RPM packages from their software that they are working on. Yeah, I'm a distgin maintainer, and I also maintain a few packages for Fedora in general, so it's my background. So why did I start to work on this thing? Sorry. Why did I start to uh, work on this thing in the first place? Um, so, like three years ago, it was, I guess, I became a distkin maintainer. I basically packaged uh, what was in Fedora infrastructure repositories uh, regarding distkit and its deployment, and I made a GitHub package or RPM package out of it. And uh, there were some uh, issues in that repository. So basically there were some issues in the repository regarding uh, adding support for git LFS or git annex. Instead of using like uh, simple HTTP uploading and downloading, there were suggestions about using git LFS or git annex or something m more integrated with git and more up to date. And these issues actually touched much, many more topics regarding, uh, for example, work with uh, unpacked sources. Like not only um, with uh, this Git repository that has spec file patches and tarballs in it, but also repositories that have spec file and uh, next to it raw source, raw source sources like that which have upstream form. And they were discussing uh, workflows. They were also discussing people in these issues. Um, they were also discussing work with submodules and usage of submodules. And uh, these issues actually gave me an idea to build a new um, client tool for this kit. Because lots of stuff that uh, people were talking about there uh, was actually not quite possible to do server side but instead I knew that I need to do this client side. So that's why I started developing it. And also there were many disk deployments, they still are many disk deployments for CentOS and for Fedora and Red Hat internal and so on. And uh, I had this idea to build uh, one tool that will work with any of them. So that's also a factor that motivated me uh, in the beginning. But uh, again, then I, then I realized that this actually, there are two ways how to do this, to make a tool that is compatible with all possible deployments. One way is to put uh, some hex into this cl client tool that uh, basically changes operation based on uh, with which deployment you work with. Or the other way is uh, to provide some package that uh, every disk deployment will use, some unified interface. So I went this way, so that was like work on the server itself, and that was basically finished by making RPM package out of this git. Now the thing that is left is for people to start using it, but that's not my problem. Anyway, um, all the other points um, below that, like avoid storing changes directly in spec files and so on, that's, that's why I um, started to develop a new tool. So this is like a problem that uh, occurs a lot on mailing lists, that uh, change logs are long and they often duplicate what is in common messages or maybe in some other change log file in the repository, so 
I wanted to figure out how we can prevent this duplication. And uh, at the same time, I, I knew about uh, Tito and uh, RDO, PKG, and so on, which are able to work with uh, unpacked sources. So that was another motivation that I wanted to also support this use case because I wanted to offer the same as uh, competition offers. Um, and also provide automatic versioning based on Git uh, tags and Git commit IDs, basically. And also, yeah, I wanted to avoid any unneeded stuff that doesn't really need to be there and be clean in the solution, which means I didn't want to put any extra files into the repository which are not part of the package itself, which should be there only to support usage of RPKG or the package utility in general. So I managed to do that, and I, all, <laughs> I managed to do that, but you can still put rpkg.conf uh, into your repository and change some configuration for RPKG when it, when it runs on that particular repository. So for example, you can uh, set up a um, path to your own macros that are used then in the spec file, I'll show, show you later. Or you can, um, you can basically change upload uh, URL to this git or download. So you will download sources from uh, different resources than default. But uh, this is all like optional. If you don't want anything there, you can achieve that state. So, uh, yeah, so I started to work on that. And I tried to, yeah, one more thing that I should say. Actually, my vision was to create a tool that is used by university students as well as package managers or package maintainers. Um, I wanted a tool that is uh, basically recommended when someone has some uh, university project for some course and he wants to make it a system installable package. So I wanted uh, RPKG to be uh, the thing that is recommended to that student. So people from university start working with RPM and basically start using it. So yeah, it should be easy to use. Um, and then I try to figure out how to do, how to basically implement those points. This one and this one, and also this one. And I found out that there is a common denominator in this, that you can actually do this three points in the same uniform way by using spec templates. And uh, this is some extra language on top of uh, standard RPM syntax that you can put into your spec files and it will make certain parts of the spec file dynamic. So it would, for, for example, it will generate version based on uh, the latest annotated tag that you have made in your repository. And actually if you call git describe, git describe will return you something very similar to what I'm returning. So this idea about uh, versioning software based on commit uh, hashes and uh, tag names was here for a very long time. Actually, Linus himself implemented this command. So it's in Git, I don't know, for 10 years. But uh, yeah, it, it has been for a long time. So it just needs to be put into some nice um, package that people can use and uh, that is um, easy to get to anyone. So yeah, I, this, these spec templates, I wanted to implement it bash because um, RPM has a shell expansion macro basically, which passes uh, the expression or command, but let's say expression to bash, it will evaluate it and replace output of that run command with a 
the tag or if the macro uh, invocation in the spec file. Uh, but uh, there is a catch, you know, I, I was thinking about actually using this, just shell expansion, which is already provided in RPM itself, so that I don't need to do anything new. But there is a slight problem with this approach, because uh, if you make SRPM from such a spec file, this, SR, this uh, spec file is put verbatim into SRPM. And uh, when you later rebuild this SRPM, it no longer has the Git context around it. So it misses Git metadata. So when you try to rebuild it, and if you would have some uh, shell, shell commands there that would read Git metadata, it would fail because the metadata are no longer in the SRPM itself. So RPM does not have a good macro for th this. Uh, if uh, there was a macro that is basically putting uh, the dynamically generated spec file into the SRPM itself, I wouldn't need to do this. So, but yeah, this can be like, uh, it doesn't, uh, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter if it is implemented in SRPM or somewhere else. So I just implement it in package uh, utility or packaging tool. And yeah, so I spent a lot of time on bash IRC channel and later also on Git IRC channel, asking about various stuff, how things works, and especially Bash <laughs> channel is uh, not exactly friendly to newbies. <laughs> so you can see one of the first uh, threads that I started there. Uh, it was basically about passing uh, named uh, arguments to a shell function. So. I will show you an example. Can you make it bigger? Yeah. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, so basically I wanted something like this. So you don't pass a free and prototype to some macro, but you name these arguments. And uh, this is bash, because I just wanted to be uh, similar, I wanted to be compatible with what RPM is already doing, and basically do something similar to shell expansion. So I was asking on IRC channel how to do this. So uh, you can see that it uh, very fast uh, ended up in a nuke explosion, basically. Very often it happened like that. <laughs> so I was told that I should uh, basically stop trying to make a code like to look like a Python code, like the Bash or any other language you can imagine. Uh, yeah. Basically, um, Bash community is friendly, but you need to learn their ways to express friendliness. <laughs> Yeah, in the end, it was actually possible, what I was asking for, um, by this thing. Um, this, like, I would say, uh, way. <laughs> you can use declare. Yeah, sorry. Um, you can use uh, declare bash uh, directive, which uh, declares new variables and assigns values to them, and also you can specify, with declare you can specify also a type of a variable if you want to, so you can specify like minus a for uh, hash or for associative array or minus x to make it uh, like exported variable. And um, funny thing is that um, you can name the arguments that the function uh, should expect here and give some default values to those arguments. And then if you use this expression, which basically unpacks actual inputs that the function gets in runtime, run and you call it with something like this. So it will get this uh, here, expanded. 
So basically, declare will first declare name as B, but you, from uh, this invocation, it's actually not here, but I can pass name, um, foo, and you can override this default value. So that's really nice because that's like function header basically in the end. So I was surprised how many things you can do in bash in the end, but you really need to look hard for them. But bash is not so bad. Like I was really excited uh, lots of times that it can do things that I wouldn't uh, expect it that it could do. So yeah, here it prints ABC because these are default values and here Barbas foo. Okay. So um, what is the current feature set? Um, I implemented all the stuff from goals and I implemented them by using spec templates and yeah, I made it parallel safe, which is kind of fun. Basically, um, I was uh, thinking about scenarios when you, for example, run evaluation of this spec file, like you render the macros, and at the same time, someone is switching branches or adding new commits or making new tags, because then you evaluate this macro uh, at some point, and then some, someone adds, changes the repository name, or adds new tag, or adds new commit, or whatever. And then this macro has different context, so it will produce some spec file that is like inconsistent. And I wasn't happy that this is possible, so I, First, I introduced some something like uh, remembering what was the output of this macro and then reusing in it in this macro, but that was bullshit, sorry. In the end, what I did was that I basically set up the state at the beginning of the evaluation, like certain uh, data that I use all the time afterwards. And I, um, that way it is solved. Uh, it took me a while to, to figure out how to do this properly. And yeah, let's keep it at the end, keep this at the end, an extension of supported git command set. So I wasn't uh, like um, very thrilled when I started to use fedpkg or rpkg or whatever that um, the, it offers some git commands but this set is very incomplete. Like, uh, I don't know if I have FedPKG installed because, uh, because, yeah, because I have a new laptop now. So, basically it offers, for example, commit or clone, but there is no merge or lock or other things that you commonly use. So uh, I b basically tried to make the, this set of Git commands that Packager can use complete, so that you don't need to use Git if you don't need to do some low-level operations. Like some, sometimes if you want some really tricky features of Git, like for example, setting a merge strategy or so, so something like that, um, you, you need to go for the Git, but for norm, normal things that I personally do every day, you ca I can just uh, use RPKG and that's it. So this is the end, thanks for your attention and now uh, I would like to hear from you what do you think and if it is a good idea and if possibly it could be used in Fedora. Yeah, right. So currently it's uh, ROPS with Git available and could you use Git stick and uh, do you have connections to things like Forgery or Bodkin? Do 
No. Yeah. Right. So actually, I left out this thing. You use a definite defined subcommands. Um, it doesn't need to be user defined, but also distribution defined. So basically, this is last feature that I'm missing right now, and that I want to do that uh, you can actually implement your own workflow as a packager. So you can add a connection to a build system or an update system, and you can add your own sub, -sub command that builds it. And uh, then you don't need to do this on a package level, meaning that you define this stuff in the repository itself, in rpkg.conf, configuration file, but you also can do it in distribution provided rpkg.conf, which is placed in etc. So just define this command that are specific for the distribution and specific for particular build system and so on. Um, if you look at this list of the command commands, build command is not there. That's something that took me some time to decide if I want to include some build command that uh, adds some integration with a specific build system. But in the end, I decided that I want just this bare bone utility that you can extend easily and you can add uh, what you need to it. So this, this is just about RPM and Git and put it, putting it together and provide a way that you can extend this for your own, own workflows. So, by the way, if you want to join development, here is a Git repo. You can write me and we can do this together. I would appreciate it because um, it's more fun <laughs> to do it with someone else also. So do you have any other questions? Uh, yeah, for use cases where um, the apps have a Git repo doesn't make a big change, uh, but you need to develop a package and not the latest version, how do, you, how do you actually plan to address that? Basically, uh, the idea is to create uh, always a new annotated tag for each new release, where you specify what are the changes. And uh, then release, if you use the macros that RPKG offers for basically generating a release and generating version, you get that for free. You don't need to like edit spec file, you just make a new annotated tag, and the rendered spec file will contain bump version and new changelog entry. Um, I read a uh, body of annotated tags, like when you make a new tag with RPKG, it stores the tag message into the tag, and then when I render the spec file, I read the contents and render ch changelog, like valid RPN changelog from it. And you can basically, there are some parameters that uh, tweaks the way the changelog is generated. So you can, for example, leave out some tag. If it, for example, contains mistake, you can provide that changelog manually and that pro then provide the rest of the changelog entries uh, automatically. So you can leave something out and do stuff like that. Basically, get their changelog is the thing that generates the changelog. And before I had this macro, I was putting stuff manually into the spec file, so this is like manual history. But I could also like limit this command to only generate changelog to a certain tag, and then uh, again start doing this manually. Or I could just not use this macro at all if I don't want to. Uh, 
That's true. That's true. Um, the name is not a very useful thing. Um, this is, I would say, useful. Or there is also a tag for release for automatic bumping. And then there is uh, this stuff. This is quite horrible because I have actually the, these two macros, git their archive and git their pack. They are taking the raw content of a git repository and they make a tarball from it that RPM can then use and make uh, RPM from it. And uh, this git their pack uses uh, git ignore command, which is uh, which is supported only from like uh, git uh, 1.8, which is not available on uh, Apple 6 or CentOS 6. So I needed to do this uh, expression that basically use git their archive uh, if we are on higher than a 6 version of operating system. Otherwise, use git their pack. Uh, but these macros basically do the packing, so you can. Uh, I work all the time with uh, these raw sources, and if I want to make um, an RPM from it, so I will call RPKG local, and it will automatically create uh, the tarballs at the beginning, and then it passes them to RPM to continue. Uh, not very well, because you cannot merge tags into your branch. If you have a tag in a side branch, you cannot rebase it, like full forward it uh, into, your, into your branch. It will always create like side branch. Um, so you actually if you want to create a new release, you should do it on the main branch that you are developing on. And the side branches should be probably used for development only and not releasing. I guess. I need to look uh, closer into this if there is some possibility, but uh, th I think I think there is this limitation. Mm-hmm. Really? That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> so it probably works. Right. Um, yes, it does. Um, basically, it is working with. Uh, if you are on your own machine and doing stuff like changing something, so what can I do? So you can see that now um, the version of a package is reported as dirty. And uh, if I am using git their pack macro in my spec file, which I am on the system, then this the RPM that I will create from this will contain that dirty spec file. So, but if I am using git their, uh, git their archive, git their ar archive only works on a clean tree. It, it never works on a dirty tree. So if I'm if I want to create a clean RPM that doesn't contain any dirty changes, then I can use git git their archive. And it will do it. So if I am developing uh, 
or testing stuff on my own machine that I can use git dir pack uh, because uh, then I can do changes on the fly and I will see them. And actually, I can use git dir archive all the time because um, git dir archive, if it finds out that it works with a dirty tree, it will use git dir pack and it will automatically, if you, if you work on a dirty tree, you will get uh, dirty RPM, and if you have clean tree, you will get clean RPM. Uh, the difference is, it's not clear, sorry, I'm um, stepping over the time. So the last thing, the difference is that if you are working on a clean tree, then you get uh, in, in the generated tarball by git archive, you get uh, hash sum of the tarball. So, uh, not hash, but commit ID from, from which the tarball comes from. So you can recognize when you inspect the RPM later if it was generating, generated from a dirty or clean tree by expecting the tar headers. And uh, you will also see it from, from this uh, git there, from this VCS stack. If uh, the tree was dirty, hash commit will not be there in the URL. If it was uh, clean, it will be it will be there the hash commit. So you can when you generate something, um, you don't need to be afraid that you somehow mix end up mixing dirty RPMs with clean RPMs because there is like clean differentiation between those, and you can look at this VCS tag and you will know if it, is, it was clean or dirty. So that's probably it. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention.